If you end up out of foster care at 18 and aged out, which means nobody ever wanted you, you didn't get connected to any family or anything, I bel- and I'm, I've, you have to look up the numbers, but I believe it's something like 60% end up homeless in the first year, like two-thirds end up in jail, 10% manage to graduate high school, two-thirds end up on drugs. They, ha- they have their kids taken away at enormous rates. Um, this like they they this is another policy they make up these policies say these foster kids let's we have money for them. the ones who are doing well we want a reward so if they're going to college we'll give them scholarships that money goes unclaimed for the because it, you find two people in all of Los Angeles because it's not meeting them where they're at they're where they're at is so terrible the outcome for these kids even psychiatrists that are involved in this sort of stuff and. They both came up with different studies and whatnot, but it was somewhere in between 40 and 60, so we'll just say 50% of children that age out end up homeless, yep. chronic homeless. Yep, chronic. Not homeless for two months, homeless right. for five years. Right. So if it's 20,000 a year, that means you're adding to a pool of homelessness in urban environments of 10,000 a year, year. 100,000 every decade. Over a year, you know? over a year. <laughs> and and the, the one study that we go back to all the time is that first year out of care one in five children are homeless, and those are the ones we know about. That first year, you know, they, they exit the system and they're homeless. Those are the ones, we, we're not accounting for the ones that have a friend and they're couch surfing and they go somewhere else on their couch. They just don't have some place to live, absolutely. We have got to stop the madness. Here's what we know. By the time a child turns nine in care and they've been freed for adoption, their likelihood of being adopted decreases significantly. Uh, so children age nine and older, children in sibling groups, children with special needs, Children who've been in and out of care for so long that they've given up hope on themselves, they've given up and they push back when efforts at permanency are applied to them. So we focused on that. We created a model that said there's got to be a better way. We looked around the country and, and asked, why is it that children are aging out of care in your community? What is it that you're not doing or what is it that you're doing but's not effective in getting these children adopted? Um, and at the time, the default method of getting these children adopted was public displays. Put their faces on a website and hope that charismatically someone who's looking at how to adopt sees this website and sees these children and says, there, that's, that's my child, a catalog of children. And sometimes it works, but for this target population of children, again, older youth, children with sim- in sibling groups, children with special needs, Typically, a family that jumps into this arena of I'd like to adopt a child doesn't look at a website and see a sibling group of three, ages 8, 12, and 15, one of whom has been in and out of the juvenile detention center, perhaps, and say, there's my ideal family, right? That's the, because we carry these myths and misperceptions about who these children are. They're too old, too damaged, too dangerous when they're simply reacting to the systems that have failed them and surrounded them for years. So we created this model that said, you can't just put their picture on a website and hope that they will get adopted. That's not effective. And is that how you would want your child in a system? If if your child had to go in the system, is this how you would treat your child? And so we created what we call a child-focused model, a child-focused recruitment model. And what it says is just do good social work. And what we would do is give grants to organizations, large or small, public or private, to hire a full-time adoption professional who would carry a a small caseload of the longest waiting children in their community and do a number of things. First and foremost is create a relationship with that child. If a child's been in care five, six, or seven years, They remember former foster parents. They have a range of adults and families that surround them already, best friends, coaches, teachers, therapists. They have a number of adults in their circle already that they relate to, that they understand, that they care about, and who care about them. And so by developing this relationship with the child, the full-time adoption professional we call a recruiter, not only um, begins to gain the trust of the child, but begins to learn this sort of forensic journey of where this child has been and who has surrounded them, and they become potential adoptive resources. And then the recruiter also does a deep dive into the case file, so the agency has kept a case file logging everything that's happened to this child along the way, every court hearing, every placement, every, every movement to and from their home, who's in this child's life. 
and then they do what we call a diligent search. They may use technology tools or just through the, the digging through the case file and begins to reach out to extended family members, best friends, families, whatever it is, and begins to identify real potential adoptive resources for this child, someone who already cares about this child. And then the recruiter goes and begins to um, make those connections, prepares the child for what is this adoption journey going to look like, prepares the family for what has this child experienced, here are some challenges they may have experienced along the way. In other words, setting the real stage for what does it look like to bring this new family together. And then the recruiter stays with the family until that it gets to a court hearing and the judge says this is a legal hand of family. And frequently, quite honestly, the recruiters stick with the family post-adoption so that they help because they have developed a relationship with the family so that they can help with any challenges that may come along the way or any needs for resources. So it's, it, it is really just good social work, but it wasn't good social work that was happening in the system for this target population of children and youth.